confirmed coronavirus cases around the world has exceeded 2.4 million according to data from Johns Hopkins University with more than 165,000 confirmed deaths so far. Meanwhile, the total number of coronavirus cases in India has reached 17,615 and the death toll in the country has recently jumped to 556. Good morning, I am Vipashna Thamang and these are the headlines of the hour. 250 people in Bhulki of Udaipur district suspected of contracting coronavirus to be tested after 13 individuals in the area found positive for COVID-19 infection. Sample for the final test for coronavirus not needed to be brought to Kathmandu now. A youth infected by COVID-19 discharged from Sethi Hospital in Dhangari after full recovery. More than 617,000 people worldwide recover from coronavirus pandemic so far. Global death toll due to the pandemic exceeds 165,000. And the players and coaching staff of AS Roma agree to go without four-month salary to help the club through the crisis caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Eleven Indians who had entered Nepal four months back and two Nepalese have tested positive for coronavirus. These individuals had been living in Bhulki, Udaipur since 35 days, raising question on the 14-day quarantine that had been considered as the period that a host's body takes to show symptoms of the virus. Furthermore, the new cases have also raised question on the first person who these individuals contracted the virus from. We have a report. Twelve Indian nationals and four Nepalese had been living in a mosque in Bhulke of Triuga municipality in Udaipur district since around 35 days. Eleven of the Indian nationals and two Nepalese have tested positive for coronavirus. On Saturday, the local government collected samples of 69 individuals who had come in contact with the 13 infected. Likewise, a helicopter carrying a four-member team led by Dr. Prachi Raimaji was sent to Udaipur to collect the samples of an additional 250 individuals in Bhulke suspected of contracting the virus. The 13 individuals had tested negative through the rapid diagnostic test and positive through the test by PCR method. This means there are high chances that the virus has either already spread or can spread further. In order to contain a possible outbreak, the government has planned to carry out tests mainly in three districts starting from Saptari to Sunsari and then to Morang. The government has expedited tracing of those individuals who came in contact with the 13 infected people in the 35-day period when they were in Bhulke. Four of the mosques that these individuals had stayed in has been sealed, while 74 individuals in Saptakoshi municipality, identified by contact tracing, have been tested with the rapid diagnostic kits. The provincial government has planned to conduct the rapid diagnostic test and test through PCR method based on the situation. As the government suspects, all 13 of the individuals contracted the virus while in Nepal. The question remains, who did they contract the virus from? The sample for the final test for COVID-19 infection will not need to be brought to Kathmandu now. The Ministry of Health and Population has informed that the Ministry has made arrangements to carry out the final tests for coronavirus at the BP Koirala Health Science Institute in Tharan and the Bheri Hospital in Nepalganj. The Ministry states complete tests related to coronavirus are now possible outside the capital. Prior to this, the samples found positive through the test by PCR method outside Kathmandu had to be brought to the capital's National Public Health Laboratory in Teku for the final test. 
Sample tests through the PCR method are now being carried out in 15 laboratories in the country. However, the tests through this method are decreasing substantially. According to the Health Ministry, from 4 p.m. on Saturday to 4 p.m. on Sunday, 64 sample tests were carried out through the PCR method. However, the number of infected cases did not increase in the 24-hour period. The health ministry says 8,081 sample tests have been done so far through the PCR method, while 21,486 sample tests have been carried out using the rapid diagnostic kit. A total of 103 people suspected of coronavirus or COVID-19 infection have been kept in isolation now, while 260 people have been kept in the red zone. A person who had been receiving treatment for coronavirus infection at the Sethi Provincial Hospital in Dhangari was discharged yesterday after full recovery. The 21-year-old youth of Lamki Chuha municipality in Kailali district arrived in Nepal from Mumbai on 24th of March through the Trinagar border transit in Dhangari. As the transit was closed, the youth along with a thousand other people were taken to a nearby quarantine in the evening by bus. After the Nepal army collected and sent the sample of his swab test to Kathmandu and the results came out positive, he was admitted at the Sethi Provincial Hospital on 4th of April. He stated that he did not have any symptom of COVID-19 and was not aware of where or how he contracted the infection. There are still four patients being treated for coronavirus at the Sethi Hospital. Welcome back. Public officials are the first of human resources that the government can mobilize, especially at a time of crisis. With the government tightening security measures amid the ongoing nationwide lockdown, lack of human resources has been felt in managing crowds of people that flock for groceries at special hours every day. Amid this crisis, the government should have been able to mobilize its employees who are without work and staying at home at the moment. that everyone will be lo looked after, the government is undoubtedly short of human resources to execute its plans. Many local level governments and local representatives have been alleged of misusing relief provisions to cater to their voters. The number of daily wage workers and their poor attempting to flock to their home districts from the capital on foot out of fear of starvation has not gone down either. The government has urged the public to abide by the lockdown and avoid going out except for emergency cases. Grocery shops are allowed to operate from early morning till 9 a.m., which has resulted in more crowd during this time period, contra contradicting the whole purpose of the lockdown. Experts opine this ongoing crisis is the right time for the government to mobilize its human resources. Tilaje, <laughs> Majority of the government offices are closed at the moment. A few of the offices that are giving services have even fewer staff. This means over the 300,000 civil service and public officials are at home without a task on hand but receiving their monthly salaries. There is a call for the government to mobilize this crucial number of officials. The number of people taking up long journeys on foot amid the ongoing lockdown has not decreased despite the central government's directive for all local levels to provide food and accommodation facilities to all those in need and stranded. As the country has entered the fourth week of the nationwide lockdown, hundreds of 
stranded individuals are still seen on the BP highway every day heading to their home districts out of fear of starvation. We have a report. Many people have embarked on difficult yet long journeys with nothing but a backpack that has a few belongings and a little food that is certain to run out before the journey ends. Nasiruddin Mansuri is one of them. He used to work in a hydropower plant in Solukumbu and is without a job since the lockdown. Despite the risk of contracting coronavirus while on the journey, like many others, Nasiruddin has reached Sinduli Bajar after many nights on empty stomach and many stops with security officials interrogating him. His destination, home district Bara. Nasiruddin will have to walk for three more days to reach his home. Many like Nasiruddin are headed for their homes in the eastern, mid Tarai and western regions. The journey is tough. They walk all day and rest the night in an open sky or if lucky, in any type of shelter available. Despite their hardship, all the three tiers of government have yet to address to their plight. While some local governments have made glossy announcements of providing food and accommodations to those stranded amid the ongoing crisis, many are just limited to promises to garner popularity. The federal government had directed all local levels to assure that the stranded individuals were provided with all necessary facilities and kept in quarantine. However, the local governments are yet to pay heed and the centre yet to make necessary changes. The Nepal Rashtra Bank has directed all banks to extend the loan installment period by three months, citing economic activities had come to a halt due to the ongoing nationwide lockdown. This has relieved many lenders for banks and financial institutions. However, the decision is yet to address the plight of small businesses. The central bank has extended the loan installment period installment period till mid-July this year following requests from industrialists. Industrialists are still lobbying for more relief packages through the Federation of Nepalese Chamber of Commerce and Industries and the Confederation of Nepalese Industries. However, the government has yet to address the issues of small businesses that are facing the equivalent brunt of the ongoing lockdown. Many small businesses have taken loan from cooperatives at an interest rate of as much as 14 percent. However, no relief packages have been introduced for these groups. As the nationwide lockdown has entered its fourth week, revenues have gone down while liabilities remains the same. So far, the government has yet to direct cooperatives to extend the installment period in the case of these small businesses. Small businesses face a further challenge as it is yet uncertain when the lockdown will end. हमरो उद्योग में कल काल खाना में काम करने मजदूर हरु को लागी हमें ले सेक महीना समा हमें ले तलब एंटर प्रकार ले दिए हों अब उपरांत हमने दिन सकने अवस्था हमें संग सही ना कैसे ले कर दखरी बाकी अब को लागी नेपाल सरकार ले ती कामदार हर लाई राहत को प्याकेज उड़ा घोषणा करे रा उद्योग मेत्री बातावरण निर्माण करने प there are 462,600 industries registered with the government, including 880 large industries. 460,000 other businesses are operating unofficially. 33% of the small businesses have been set up with family investments, 14% with loan from banks and financial institutions, and 6% with loan from cooperatives. Over 50% of their entrepreneurs have some amount of loan on them. According to a data by the central bank, on an average, each small business has employed nine individuals. Economists opine the government should introduce a different relief package for these small to medium scale businesses. They warn the government's inaction towards small and medium scale industries could cost many small businesses and thereby a large number of employment. And it's time now for our segment Public Pulse where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse.
And here's the question, how should the government mobilize its employees staying at home at this moment of crisis? The options are option A, recruit them for delivery services, option B, assign them for contact tracing and option C, deploy them to rescue stranded people. The voting is on. Type any WS, select your options A, B or C and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. And it's time now for our special segment of The Beat. The government's priority to establish a commission on landless squatters to address their problems at this time of global COVID-19 pandemic has raised many eyebrows. The government decided on Wednesday to establish a commission on landless squatters with separate mechanisms in all the 77 districts, which will require human resources of up to 550 individuals across the country. In the current scenario, the government is facing financial challenges to make up for the losses due to the coronavirus outbreak. Revenue collection has declined sharply, mounting pressure on the government to reduce expenses. However, the cabinet decided to establish a high-level commission to distribute land to the landless squatters in all the 77 districts by appointing officials based on political approach. The government appointed Devi Gyawali as the chairman of the seven-member commission. Gyawali, who contended for the post of mayor in the local-level elections, is affiliated with the ruling Nepal Communist Party. The chairman of the commission will have facility on par with the minister, while the members will receive salary equivalent to that of a government secretary. Likewise, all the 77 district coordinators will receive facilities equivalent to that of an undersecretary. Meanwhile, the commission has been given three years to complete the task of managing land for the squatters. Preliminary estimates show the government will be spending annually as much as 300 million rupees in salary for the officials. It may be recalled that the previous governments had also formed 11 similar commissions to address the problems of the landless squatters. The erstwhile governments recruited party cadres and distributed government lands to people who had political reach through those commissions. The country has been in a state of lockdown for almost a month now to prevent an outbreak of coronavirus. The primary focus of the government at this crucial stage should have been to intensify the testing of COVID-19 infection and provide relief packages to daily wage workers who have been hardest hit due to the lockdown. At this time of national health crisis, the government is focused on forming an unnecessary mechanism to address the need of its party cadres. Tea estates in eastern Nepal have been severely affected by the government-implemented lockdown to contain the spread of coronavirus. At a time when tea farmers were supposed to make fast cash at this peak harvesting season, they have started destroying the plants out of the frustration of not being able to sell their produce. With the announcement of the lockdown, producers were deprived of a market to sell the popular CTC tea produced in Japa. Farmers were ready to pluck the green tea leaves from the second week of March. However, with the lockdown imposed from 24th of March, the tea leaves have exceeded their plucking period, forcing the farmers to destroy them out of frustration. In general, farmers make good profit in the first season as the plucked tea leaves are considered of the best quality. The implementation of the lockdown prevented the farmers from making a second round of harvest, resulting in a huge loss for the tea estates. There has been series of discussions to find an alternative to operate tea gardens even as the lockdown continues. However, concerned authorities have failed to reach a decision. As tea gardens remain shut, part-time employees have also been hit hard. Almost 1 million kilograms of tea leaves are being destroyed every week since the lockdown was implemented. This is Abhuday Shrestha for Off the Beat and Kantipur News Desk. That's all for the moment. Keep watching Kantipur Television HD for more news and entertainment. Thank you for watching. Have a good day and stay safe.